Far Cry 5 is an oxymoron in video game form. The game itself is nothing special. We've seen it done before in previous entries in the series and in other FPS or action adventure titles. Most of the game is spent in the heat of battle and that's perfectly fine for what Far Cry is, just another action adventure title from Ubisoft. However, there's way more to this game than what's on the surface. Yeah, this may be a game full of cliches and bullet sponge enemies, it may be Ubisoft cashing in on the Far Cry name and it may be the third Far Cry game in a row that has completely failed to capture the feel that Far Cry 3 executed so well, but even with all of these negatives, something good seems to have come from it. I enjoyed my time playing Far Cry 5, and I expected to absolutely hate the game. It isn't perfect, but it isn't terrible either. It's just fun in the simplest form. And isn't that what video games are intended to be? Fun? In today's video, we're going to be looking at Far Cry 5, and how even though the game failed in terms of what most fans of the series want from a Far Cry game, it still managed to be an enjoyable experience in the end. To see how Far Cry 5 failed, we need to look at the fundamentals of what makes a Far Cry game, and why Far Cry 5 failed to execute these things. I'm mainly going to be referring to Far Cry 2, 3, and 4, as those are the games in the series that I have the most experience with, and also because I think they captured what Far Cry is, but also what it shouldn't be. Far Cry 2 perfected the mechanics from the first game, and added a whole new sense of realism and immersion due to the improved graphics, gunplay, and controls. Something Far Cry 2 did really well was make you feel as if you're in this uncharted wilderness, and even though it's been many years since I've played the game, the memory of walking through the tall grass in the African savannah still stays with me to this day. I also remember getting malaria all the time in that game, but I don't remember if that was because malaria was way too common in the game, or if I was just too young to realise that all I had to do was go to a doctor and get it cured. Most likely the latter. You don't look so good. You're tired. Anyway, Far Cry 2 was an excellent game, and it still holds up today with its incredible realism and beautiful environments. Most importantly though, it laid the strong foundations for the future of Far Cry. When Far Cry 3 rolled around, this time Ubisoft had the experience of two games under their belt. Not only had they implemented the perfected formula of immersion, beautiful environments, and incredible world building from Far Cry 2, but they also wrote a fantastic story with a great array of characters. Far Cry 3 was the peak of the series. It had a beautiful open world, interesting characters, realism, plot twists, upgrades, weapon customization, hunting, crafting, and a ton of bad guys to kill. When I think of Far Cry, it's always Far Cry 3 that comes to mind. They really got this game almost perfect. However, the success of Far Cry 3 came at a cost, the downfall of the series. The success of the Far Cry 3 formula and the appeal of the game's main antagonist, Vast Montenegro, meant that the pressure was high for the next Far Cry game to deliver, and it seems like the pressure was too much to handle because Far Cry 4 fell short and was sadly nowhere near as good as its predecessor. The game attempted to emulate what Far Cry 3 did, but failed miserably. RJ wasn't as interesting as Jason, Pagan and Min pales in comparison to Vass, the story and characters were way less personal and much less believable, and everything else was pretty much a carbon copy of Far Cry 3, apart from the environments of Karaz and a few weapons. Far Cry 4 failed for the same reasons that every Far Cry game after 3 failed, a complete lack of ambition. Instead of trying to innovate and in creating sequels to bring something completely new to the table, they tried to recreate previous games with different settings, new characters, and a few new weapons, and then pass it off as a new game. You could try to argue that Far Cry Primal was an attempt at innovating, but even then they used the exact same map as Far Cry 4 and just changed the time period and improved the graphics. Primal removed a fundamental feature of Far Cry anyway, guns. Is Far Cry really Far Cry without an extensive array of weaponry to use? It certainly isn't as fun. Far Cry Primal was an attempt to step away from what went wrong in Far Cry 4, however instead they jumped almost into another genre entirely. And that brings us to today, Far Cry 5. Ever since the astounding success of Far Cry 3, Ubisoft have been scrambling around attempting to create another game that grips fans in the same way. I think the main problem of Far Cry 5 is that it also failed to deliver a convincing story with realistic characters who have believable motives. It's almost like a parody of a Far Cry game in a way. There's a big bad villain, an underdog that rises to greatness, and friendly faces to help them along the way. However, throughout the whole thing, it feels as if the game is always reminding you that you're playing a Far Cry 
retro game with the overabundance of cliches, opposed to letting you get completely immersed. It's a shame that for the most part the game feels like this because there's some really really great things about this game that you can find if you dig deeper and push past the cliches, boring action segments and generic mission structure. Far Cry 5 failed simply because it was trying too hard to be a Far Cry game and not hard enough to innovate and bring something new to the series. The main villain of the game, Joseph Seed, is clearly another attempt to create an insane edgy villain who has completely lost touch with humanity and he still isn't anything compared to Vass. I'm sick of seeing these cliche villains in Far Cry games. It needs to be something fresh and interesting instead of the same old copy paste formula. The same goes for the overall story. I'm sick of having some evil or tyrannical leader to overthrow. If Far Cry took a step back and returned to its roots, focused on making the game about surviving in harsh conditions while also having an interesting story that takes itself seriously, then I reckon we'd have a great game on our hands. However, instead of this, Ubisoft insists on releasing games that appeal to kids. This is evident in Watch Dogs. The first game had a way more serious narrative, troubled characters, and it took itself seriously. However, with Watch Dogs 2, this was completely turned upside down. The game had a terrible story in which basically nothing happened, there was ridiculously eccentric characters, and the game was a huge joke. It seems like Far Cry also got the Ubisoft treatment, where essentially the game is now way more marketable to a younger audience, because there are bright colours and explosions, dumbed down mechanics, and a narrative that is way less interesting than previous titles in the series. They also completely took out the main character's voice and personality, meaning that you're just a lifeless person simply doing things. You don't feel like part of the world, you feel like you're in a video game because your character doesn't interact with anyone or respond to anyone in the game. I actually liked Jason Brody from Far Cry 3 because he had a personality and reacted to the people around him. Hell, I mean, even RJ Gale was better than nothing, at least he was a character. Far Cry 5's main character is literally nothing. There's no investment into any form of character because there is no character or personality to be invested in. They also added in a stupid character creation system that is so minimal that it may as well not have been there at all. It's just a way to further push microtransactions by making more customizability in the game, and I'm sure that adds some completely pointless DLC outfits in the future for stupid people to waste their money on. But I suppose that's just how the industry is nowadays. Anyway, Far Cry 5 failed as a Far Cry game because it didn't deliver what Far Cry fans have wanted since Far Cry 3, a game with a great open world, great characters, and a great story. Far Cry 5 may tick one of those boxes, but there is a severe lack of drive or purpose in the narrative, and all the characters are based on stereotypes and cliches that we've seen in other forms of media. However, that's not to say that the game is all bad. If you look past Far Cry 5's many flaws and accept it for what it is, a mediocre action-adventure FPS with raw fun at its core, Far Cry 5 is actually incredibly appealing. Firstly, the open world is absolutely beautiful. If there's one thing that Ubisoft know how to do, it's making a great looking open world. I find myself slowly walking through areas to appreciate the scenery in the game. It's always nice to be able to stop every now and then to appreciate a game world that has been crafted with skill and care by developers. Not only is the open world beautiful, but it's also full of things to do. People to help, weapons to collect, and places to explore. There's a lot of content in Hope County, considering the fact that there's three separate regions owned by three different lieutenants, and there's three key characters for each region, whose quests link off into other quest lines and separate side quests, which is really nice. Now, some of these side quests are pretty generic. A lot of them consist of going to an area and killing people. However, I still found these quests immensely fun because the gunplay is absolutely amazing. It's something that Far Cry has always done well, and it's been refined even more in this game. Pairing the gunplay and mechanics with the array of weapons you can use in the game makes for an amazing combination, meaning that every combat encounter is a pleasure and plays incredibly well. Not to mention that there is a ton of customization for each weapon in the game, so you have a lot to work towards as you collect the best weapons and progress through the game. The reason why I call this the hidden appeal of Far Cry 5 is because on the surface, the game just looks like other Far Cry games, and for the most part it is. But because Far Cry 5 failed to be a great Far Cry game, it also succeeded where others didn't. First of all, the game doesn't seem to take itself completely seriously, and where I would have preferred a more serious story like in Far Cry 3, it actually ended up being pretty enjoyable. It has a weird narrative that starts off very abruptly and tries to cram a lot of information down your throat quickly so you can get to the true meat and potatoes of the game. The shooting, blowing up shit, and generally having a whale of a time. I must admit that early on in the game, I wasn't enjoying myself at all. Quests were dumb, the characters weren't interesting, and the story was not entirely believable. I really 
really hated the beginning of this game because it didn't feel like a Far Cry game, let alone a good game that was worth the £50. However, lo and behold, as I progressed through the game, I found myself actually enjoying quests because the gameplay itself is immensely enjoyable and the game's world is fun to explore. Hell, even some of the sections of the story were actually well done. I must say that the performances in some of the scenes were great. One scene in particular is where you're in a church with John Seed and he's scratching words into your chest and he's threatening your friend in a really maniacal way. I just thought this scene was pretty intense and it took me completely by surprise considering most of the scenes in the game were pretty boring or predictable. Another scene I think was great is when you kill Jacob Seed and you're standing on top of the cliff as he's slowly dying and lecturing you about how easy civilizations can crumble. And how can I forget the scenes with Joseph Seed after you kill each lieutenant? I've got to say at first I didn't really like Joseph at all and he definitely isn't amazing. He's a mediocre villain but I must say that Greg Brick's performance as the father is fantastic and I think a lot of the character's weight and believability comes from the actor behind him. So the game isn't really all that bad. Don't get me wrong, I wanted Far Cry 5 to be so much more than what we got and who knows, maybe in the future we'll get the Far Cry we deserve. For now, I suppose we're stuck with the Ubisoft treatment. The ending of the game is one of the things that I personally didn't like. I played the game for a good 45 hours doing side quests, upgrading my weapons and preparing to take on the cult and the ending had no payoff at all. I decided to check what the other endings of the game were and they were just as inconclusive and vague as the one I got. I got the most interesting ending in my opinion, however there was no payoff at all and it was the same way with Far Cry 4. The endings were all terrible and everything you worked towards is completely destroyed in one way or another. I get that they were trying to have this nihilistic ending that is open ended and shows that not everything works out in the end, but it would have made way more sense if the game had that feeling from the very beginning. Instead, throughout the whole game, you're made to believe that the cult will be overthrown and that the deputy is the chosen one that will make everything right. Not only this, but taking down the lieutenant is incredibly easy and for everything to go so horribly wrong in the end makes no sense. It would have been way more impactful if the whole game felt like a losing battle because you get so close through that struggle against the cult to still fail at the end. Whereas the actual ending is after the game being a complete walk in the park and suddenly right at the very end everything goes wrong. I know there's a mixed opinion about the ending of the game however I simply didn't like it. I much prefer an ending that pays off everything that happened in the game and especially in a game with already so many cliches you'd expect there to be a big cliche ending that at least makes everything seem worthwhile but instead I'm left with an ending that kind of makes me wonder why I stuck with the game to the very end in the first place. Far Cry 5 may have failed in terms of what I know I and many other fans of the Far Cry series have wanted since Far Cry 3. However, that doesn't mean the game is all bad. It has a beautiful open world, great gunplay, places to explore, and it's generally a good time. It's one of those games that's in the middle of great and terrible, and it's safe to say that I enjoyed my time playing, although I can't really recommend it. Far Cry 5 is proof that there can be beauty in failure.